Today, we're going to be talking about the classic universal monster verse. I'm not including the spin offs Frankenstein meets Wolfman, Return from the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I'm not the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing the main bulk. I'm doing Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Wolfman, The Mummy, and The Invisible Man. So we got eight movies I'm going to be talking about very briefly. I'm going to try and keep this relatively short. So since I already have my Creature from the Black Lagoon shirt on right now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one first. <laughs> this movie is just such a piece of shit. I hate everything about it. The monster is terrible. It's unlikable. And it's not even iconic, if I'm going to be quite honest. Like, nothing about this movie and this monster draws any attention to me at all. The movie is actually my favorite out of all of them. Uh, it goes back and forth between Wolfman and Creature from the Black Lagoon, but this Halloween season, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon takes it from the Wolfman. But, you know, if you ask me three years from now, it could change. But those are my top two. The movie came out in 1954, and when you first watch Dracula that came out in the 30s, and then you watch this one within like a couple day time period, you can see the 20 plus year difference of film of where it came from and Dracula all the way to Creature from the Black Lagoon. You got a bunch of underwater shots, really beautiful shots, by the way, stuff that in the 50s would have, I mean, I'm, st I'm astonished that they were able to do that in the 50s, so I can't even imagine what people sitting in theaters in the 50s for the first time watching was seeing of them doing these a bunch of underwater shots and something that i didn't notice before i've seen this movie a couple times but something that i didn't notice but i picked up on it this time which is a telltale sign of a good movie is when you can pick up on stuff continuously even through rewatches. but there was a lot of scenes in it that kind of reminded me of jaws there's one specific scene where uh, the the girl played by Julie Adams, I think her name is, and she is just swimming. Uh, she got off the boat. She wanted to go swimming. And the monster, Gilman, he's underneath her watching her. And the shots is like a POV of the monster looking at her. He's coming up to her and she has no idea. So I don't know if Jaws pulled any inf inspiration from that. I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. And even though he is a monster, he's really not the villain of the movie. Uh, it's really the humans that are the villain of this movie. They're in his atmosphere, his ecosystem. And if someone came into your home, you would protect it. <laughs> Next up is going to be Dracula. So Bella Lugosi plays Dracula in an iconic role. And to be honest, to me, this wasn't really one of my favorites to ever go back and rewatch. I always kind of have not been into vampires like ever, but I went in with an open mind to rewatch all these movies. There's a couple that I watched for the first time. I'll tell you about that in a sec, but Dracula I have seen before. I was younger when I saw it. I did not like it. That's why I hadn't watched it again since then, but I came back with an open mind and you know what? It was better than I remember. I think that maybe because I was a kid, but I don't know. I liked it a lot more. So Bela Lugosi is definitely creepy as Dracula. He's very suave also. And the only thing that kind of bothered me was his assistant. That was a weird... I don't know what was really going on with him. Uh, he's eating bugs and spiders and stuff. I don't know. But in the movie, Dracula can also, for some reason, transform into a werewolf or a wolf or something like that. I don't. I don't ever remember that being one of dracula's powers so that was kind of odd i thought that they were going to tie that into the wolfman but they never did it was just one of his special abilities in the movie which i thought was kind of odd <laughs> right there frankenstein i didn't really notice it before but it doesn't have a score so another youtuber zach goller pointed that out during his review so then when i watched frankenstein i noticed there is no score there's no background music or anything like that which i never noticed before every piece of tension that they make with this movie is just from the actors and the lightning and you know stuff like that his grunts so yeah you know shout out to zach for pointing that out to me because i was i never noticed that before and i've seen this movie at least twice before the time that i watched this one they don't really waste a lot of time. It starts right off with them in the graveyard, digging up the dead body to use that. 
as part of his experiment. And then the movie just kind of rolls, you know? Um, it's about a mad scientist with this crazy experiment going on. He has a fiance, he's supposed to get married. And, you know, the monster breaks free and terrorizes the city. You know the rest how it goes. Trapped in the windmill and the windmill burdens down. But what happens to Frankenstein? Well, we'd figure that out in what I'm going to call Frankenstein Part 2, which most people would call the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> While this is a good movie, this was my first time watching Bride of Frankenstein. While it was a good movie, I was very, very upset and felt misled by the movie because the movie is an hour and 15 minutes. Do you want to take a guess when The Bride of Frankenstein appears on screen? I'm going to give you two seconds to, to take a guess. An hour and 10 minutes. We have to wait until we even see The Bride of Frankenstein. So we get five minutes of The Bride of Frankenstein. Now, I get it. The movie's about her creation with a title called The Bride of Frankenstein, I'm just assuming that you're gonna show me the monster of the bride a lot sooner than five minutes left of the movie. And I, the analogy I came up with in my head while watching this was like, if we watched a Batman movie and then we knew that Robin or Nightwing was gonna have their own movie next, and then we go into that movie expecting that, and then the whole movie is just Batman 2.0 and then five minutes near the end we get Robin. But the movie's titled Robin. Wouldn't you feel a little upset and like misled? I think you would. My favorite part of the movie, and I definitely would not have expected this, was the scene where Frankenstein the monster is with a blind man and he was kind of ran out of the city. Everyone's chasing after uh, the monster. Everyone's trying to kill him. But the blind man just wants a friend. And he teaches Frankenstein a couple words. He teaches him about eating and drinking and smoking and music, having a good time and being friends. That was probably my favorite part of the movie was just him hanging out with the blind man. <laughs> the plan was to wear my Frankenstein shirt while talking about Frankenstein, but I completely forgot about it because I got wrapped up in talking about the movie. But, oh well. Next up is The Mummy. This one... <sighs> This was my least favorite, if I'm going to be just just frank with you. This one was really hard for me to sit through, and I actually made a mistake with The Mummy. This was another one where I hadn't seen The Mummy before, and I ended up watching the one from the 60s, and it was in color. And I was like, I don't remember it being in color. Like, was it supposed to be in color? So I ended up watching that one from the 60s. And I really liked that one, but that one isn't part of the Universal Monsters canon. And so then I had to watch The Mummy that was in canon from the 30s. I think 1932, I'm pretty sure. And that one was just, it was hard for me to sit through that one. I'm not going to lie. Even with like the short runtime of like an hour and like 10 minutes or something like that, that one was difficult to sit through. The next Universal Monster movie that I was able to sit down and watch was The Invisible Man. And this is one that I had watched before, but it was one that I kind of forgot how, like, the intricate details of the movie were and the plot and all that other stuff. So, like, him making himself invisible on purpose, that, that was something I forgot about. Really, the only thing that I truly remembered about this movie was the ending scene where... He is in the snow, and they're trying to track him down in the snow. That was really, like, the m most memorable thing that I took away from this movie that I could remember. So the rest of the movie was, like, a really good refresher. And the thing about this character is it wants you to hate him. This character's a lunatic. He's a psychopath. Compared to all the other monsters, he is a nut job. He's crazy. And I just could not root for him. Probably the best thing about this movie is the effects. So it's hard to compare this and Creature of the Black Lagoon, their effects, because they were made in two different time periods. And But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and say that The Invisible Man blew me away more with the effects and what they were able to do on camera and stuff like that because I just was having a hard time believing that they were able to make me believe that someone was invisible for this time period that the movie was made. 
So I can't even imagine what the heck people were thinking in the theaters when they were watching this stuff happen. Because it really is, it looks realistic for that time period that it was made. And you got to keep that in mind. It's not today's visual effects. And I know a lot of people and a lot of us are spoiled by that. But you got to watch the movie and remember when this was made and what it accomplished when this came out. I feel like this is another favorite for a lot of people. Now for me, Creature of the Black Lagoon, but I feel like the top two for a lot of people are Frankenstein and the Wolfman. And I totally get it because Wolfman is so classic and iconic and he's a badass. The only thing that kind of, I forgot about this movie that kind of rubbed me the wrong, wrong way was he was very persistent about going out with this woman who was getting married. And it was like to the point of like being creepy that he was like that persistent. So we have the Wolfman terrorizing the city and he's trying to get caught by the townspeople. I know that I'm going off on a little bit of a different path right now, but I just want to throw in there that the remake that came out in I think 2010, 2009, 2010 with Benicio Del Toro, I actually enjoy that one a lot. Uh, I don't know if that's a guilty pleasure or not. I don't know people's mindsets on that, but I thought that that was a really good remake. They give you a lot of information in this movie about werewolves and what makes someone a werewolf how to stop a werewolf stuff like that the story is very intriguing very engaging it's probably the second best story slash plot out of all seven of these movies i'm talking about and i did just say seven because earlier i said eight but i grew up in florida i i can barely read and write I failed math a couple times, so I said eight by accident, but I meant seven. So what is your favorite monster from these seven of the Universal Monsters, the originals? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And before I go, it's alive! Now we're going to get the...